Sometimes rational equations have two solutions because when you've cleared the denominators and get ready to solve the problem, you have an x squared term in them. And so, or in this case, it's going to be an a squared term. Uh, I can solve that by the zero product rule, or factoring in the zero product rule. I can solve it by the quadratic formula, and I can solve it by completing the square, etc. I could solve it by graphing. I'm going to focus on solving by factoring because um, an introductory algebra student would be solving by factoring at this point. Um, so let's go ahead and um, take a look at this problem. The LCD is a plus 1 and a minus 1. Not that I care too much, really, in this one. But let's write it down because, remember, when you have a proportion, the cross product, the 6 needs to be multiplied by the a minus 1. That was the missing piece in this denominator. And then the a here needs to be multiplied by the a plus 1. I'm setting the cross products equal to one another. So I have a times this a plus 1. And so now, I'm kind of wondering how this is going to going to uh, come down here, um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, distribute this. Solve a 6a minus 6, and here I have a squared plus a. There is no getting rid of the a squared term. So whether I'm going to use the quadratic formula or, um, now if I was completing the square, I might leave the 6 on this side, but I'm going to get 0 on the left-hand side. I like to keep my a squared where it is because it's positive right now. There's a a, um, plus sign in front of that a squared term. So I'm going to subtract 6a from both sides. So this 1a minus that 6a will be l minus 5a. And while I'm at it, I'm going to add 6 to both sides. Again, in an effort to get 0 over here, and then everything else over here. And again, I'm going to pause and say, oh gee, I can factor that thing. So I can find two numbers whose product is a positive 6. and adds to be a negative 5. I think those two numbers are a negative 3 and a negative 2. And remember, the zero product rule says that at any given time you set uh, any of the factors that contain the variable equal to 0. So I'd set the a minus 3 equal to 0 to find one of my solutions. And I'd set the a minus 2 equal to 0 to find my other solution. Um, you know, you add 3 to both sides and find out that one of your answers to this problem is the number 3. And when you add 2 to both sides on this one, the other answer is a positive 2. Um, please remember, the restrictions on the domain of this problem, because of the first denominator, a cannot equal a negative 1. And because of that second denominator, a cannot equal a positive 1. It turned out to be 3 and 2. Um, those are uh, the solutions, for sure, to that problem. Take time. That was easy to check. Really, quite, quite easy. At, at any one time, just put one of those values in. So put a 3 in here, put a 3 in there, put a 3 in there, and see if the two sides equal one another. Then do that with the 2. So um, remember that we have two solutions because there's a squared term. We have two real solutions. When you get up into some of your, your other algebra courses, you may not always have real solutions to a quadratic equation. Um, but that's another topic. Uh, let's do one more problem that would have two solutions. <clears throat> and so that problem is... Okay, so I've got to get a common denominator. So I've got to factor all the denominators. This one's called a perfect square trinomial. But, you know, it doesn't matter necessarily that you recognize that. I know that because of the x squared term right there, that I need to factor that with an x in the front of each of those binomials. And I now need two numbers that multiply together to be a positive 9 and add to be a negative 6. Those two numbers are a minus 3 and a minus 3. And here, the only thing I can do with this is to take the greatest common factor out of 3. So I'm going to do that. I'll take the 3 out. And likewise here, all I can do is take a 2 out of those two denominators. And when I do, I have 2 times x minus 3. So my least common denominator is all of these, the greatest number of times they occur in any one 
denominator. So a 2 occurs and a 3 occurs, so my LCD is a 6. I think I'm going to write that down as 2 times 3, even though it is a 6. X minus 3 once. X minus 3 once. Ooh, X minus 3 twice. My LCD has to have the X minus 3 in it two times because that's the greatest number of times in a denominator. I'm going to exaggerate and I'm going to write it out twice, but I can tell you that many textbooks would just write that as X minus 3, that quantity squared. So remember, I'm going to kind of do it the proper way. Remember that you are multiplying this fraction by that whole LCD. So you're multiplying by the 6 times the x minus 3 and the x minus 3. And those cancel out. So that denominator already had the 2x minus 3s. It didn't have the 6. So this 3 gets multiplied by 6. And that gives me 18 right there. This denominator, when it gets multiplied by the 2 times the 3 times the x minus 3 times the x minus 3, then the 3s cancel, one of the x minus 3s cancel out. So this x minus 2 right here, this positive x minus 2, has to be multiplied by 2 times x minus 3. That's, that's going to be kind of interesting. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put, it's got to be multiplied by 2 times x minus 3. Multiplication can be done in any order, so I just decided to put the 2 in front and then x minus 3 in the back. So again, that binomial had to be multiplied by this and this. Finally, when I multiply this fraction by the 2 and the 3 and x minus 3 and x minus 3, the things that cancel out are the 2 and one of the x minus 3s. So the missing piece down here was a 3 and an x minus 3. So this x has to get multiplied by a 3 and by an x minus 3. This time I just decided to put it right, at, right behind it. I could have put the 3 in front of the x. Um, let's see. Now I've got to clean this up. I would highly recommend that when you have to multiply three t things together and two of them are binomials, that you foil the binomials first and then multiply by the 2. Because a lot of people think that 2 should be multiplied by this and get 2x minus 4. And then they think for some reason that the 2 should be multiplied by that too. That's not the case. Um, so let's FOIL this and get x squared minus 5x plus 6. I took this minus 3x and minus 2x and did that in my head. And in my next step, I'll be sure to multiply that by a 2. Over here, this right here is called a 3x. And so when I distribute that times x, I'll get a 3x squared. And then 3x times that minus 3 is a minus 9x. So again, got to keep cleaning this thing up. So here I have 2 x squared minus 10x, and then right there, a positive 12, with this 18 over here, which combines to be 30. These are 30. So I have 2x squared minus the 10x plus the 30. And then over there, I have 3x squared minus the 9x. Well, I've got to get the x squared terms together, and I'm going to have to solve this by factoring. I prefer positive numbers in front of my x squared term. So I'm going to subtract 2x squared from both sides. I'm going to add 10x to both sides. And then finally, I'm going to subtract 30 from both sides because I need 0 over here. So that's 0. That's 0. That's 0. Over here then. I have left a 1x squared right there, a 1x, and then a minus 30, and I have the 0 on the right. And so finally, I think I can factor this. I think the two numbers whose product is a negative 30 are 6 and 5. One of them's got to have a negative sign. So they have to have different signs. One's got to be positive, one's got to be negative. They need to add to be this 1, 6 and 5. Better be a positive 6 and a minus 5 for those to multiply to be a negative 30 and add to be 1. And then the zero product rule says to set the x plus 6 equal to 0, and therefore one of my solutions is a negative 6. And then it says set the x minus 5 equal to 0 and add 5 to both sides, and one of my solutions is a positive 5. My restrictions for this problem was just x could not equal a 3. 
That's the only value x could not equal. I have checked these. These do work. These are the two solutions to this rational equation.